I tell them all the time, all the time. I still ain't figured this out. I'm in it for the I'm long run. Long run. I still ain't figured this out, man. She said she got the hands. I still ain't figured this out. She said he got the cues. I still ain't figured this out, man. And welcome to another episode of the Crappy Awesome Podcast. It's your host, Kill C. Ray. If this is your first time tuning in, man, thank you so much for doing so. But make sure you go over to platformcollection.com um, and go take in all the cool artists we have over there, the cool art we have over there. Um, that is what we support. If you need the statement, it's right there on the website, platformcollection.com. Um, these are artists that we think you should know about. Thank you for tuning into this show. If you're tuned in via um, just the audio, remember you can always go to YouTube, watch the video. You hope to watch him grow. It's been super dope to um, just watch him build in his own community. I've been able to watch him perform live. He's an excellent live performer. That's a that's without a doubt. Um, but as we always do, first timers. Here we go. Introduce yourself, sir. What's going on, everybody? My name is Diesel5001. I'm from San Bernardino, California. I'm a big, fluffy nerd that loves making music and putting smiles on faces for all the days that I didn't have smiles on mine. That's what's up, man. Diesel, dude, uh, thank you for doing this. Um, thank you for having me. We've been working on this. We've been working on getting you on for a minute. Um we, uh, obviously, none of us would have predicted the crazy times that we're in. Um, I think the last time I saw you in person was probably Thop Fest. Um, shout out to 60 East. I think I saw you there in person. That was the last time, maybe. Um, but this is your first time on this show. This is the first time that I haven't, I haven't had an alumni on in a minute. That's super exciting to me. We, we, we get to extend our alumni team now. Um, Dude, tell me, um, I mean, we got to start, we got to kind of start from the beginning, right? Because we okay. want the audience to kind of like get to know you. Um, I'm sure this will be, you know, one of many times you'll be on from this point on. So let's start with the beginning of the story. Um, where were you born? I was born in Hollywood, California. In Hollywood, like yeah, the actual Hollywood, Hollywood like Tinsel yeah, Hollywood Town. Presbyterian Hospital. And, and you lived in Hollywood for how long? Um... We were actually living in Inglewood at the time. So I was in there um, from birth till about uh, three. We were in Inglewood and then we moved to Whittier, California. And then about the age six or seven, I came to San Bernardino. I've been there ever since. Okay, so but six like, or seven, you're San Bernardino. Um, are you big family, like uh, uh, brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have a brother, older brother, older sister, a gazillion cousins. And, um, yeah. you know, our, our sense of family is like, it, it is what it is. Like, we all come from broken homes. Like, every single member of my family is from a broken home or two or three marriages or whatnot, a million different last names. So, like, um, we our, our cousins became like more like our siblings and our best friends and like and our friends became families and like a lot of us you know would only see our dads on the weekends or not at all you know so our friends like father figures became our dads and whatnot so like our sense of family was more like community based you know right, a lot of right. growing up with the same interests and the same maybe the same afflictions or just the same experiences you know we all kind of gathered together that way what about um, mom and dad? Were they around? Yeah, yeah. They uh, they split when I was uh, you know, about six. That's why I came out here. Okay. You know, with your um, mom? You came out with your mom or your dad? My mom. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it is what it is. Some people don't need to get married young or who, who knows? I don't know their life. So, I mean, I can't judge them for whatever. For you know, sure. I don't know what they went through. But, you know, I'm grateful that things happened the way they did because I've had a lot of great experiences since and I wouldn't have met a lot of people that I've met and I wouldn't have done a lot of things I've done if things didn't like you know domino out the way that they did you know like I still have a good relationship with my dad you know, he was there every weekend when I was a kid even though him and my mom didn't work out he still made sure he was present in our lives and 
kept cool. inspiring us and teaching us and doing what he could to make sure that he knew that we, we were important to him. So they were okay. So that's cool. So they're around. You got uh, it seems like a lot of at least peers that you can kind of gravitate to around with your family members. Yeah. When does the um, like the art side of this start start coming into your life? When are you like real life? Like, what were your first early influences as far as like family members? Was there anybody in in the house already doing art? My mom. My yeah. mom. She loves to sing. You know, okay. she sings while she's cooking all stuff cleaning whatever um it, it was just in her like i got my love of music from from my mom dope you know? okay and so like, but but was she was it something that you guys did like as a family or were you in lessons or was it just kind of just around you all the time no it was, it was kind of around me like I, I grew up um a jehovah's witness uh-huh. and so we would you know sing at our kingdom halls a lot and it was just something that was fun for me because i was a painfully shy kid and like, i'm still shy to this day but like that was something where I didn't feel shy in expressing my voice or how, how I sounded. So like I felt comfort in like being able to do something that others could do, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So you're, um, you're singing, you're, you're starting to say like, let's flash forward to like middle school, those early like Mm -hmm. formative years. Um, what kind of kid were you? The weird one. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, I mean, a, what's what's that mean? If we're at school, yeah, where are you hanging yeah, out? What are you doing? I was, you know, drawing my own comic books. You know, okay. I was reading. I was listening to tapes and CDs that I probably shouldn't have been listening to, according to my mom. I was I was off in my own world. Like my imagination was just through the roof. Like people probably thought I was just being quiet and weird, but like I had a whole nother world going on. Like a whole world where I'm just creating, just being who I want to be and having that freedom to, to take you wherever your imagination could take you to. Were you um, social? Did you have like a big group of friends? Were you a loner? What yeah, was going I, on? I was, I was a loner for the most part in the, in the early times. And like with music, like gangster rap was really big around that time. And like, even though like I grew up in San Bernardino and it's, it's all around you. Yeah. Uh, that, that wasn't me. You know, I wasn't that type of kid, you know? So, um, I, I found like my solace, like in R and B and rock and whatnot, just things that spoke to like, me finding like my identity and being rejected and this and that. And then okay. My... But where did that, where did that part come from? Was that influence from an older brother? Was it influence? Like what you mean? What was, why did you gravitate? Cause like, I know, like I have a very similar path um, hmm. that you're describing, but for me, it was like a, an older cousin. He just had like really good taste in music. And so yeah. I, it would leak into my brain and then I started creating my shit. What? How did you get like start developing your palette for music? Uh, was it my older brother? He's six years older than me. Okay. And, uh, do you remember those? Uh, those the Columbia House. A uh, little. Oh little yeah, 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 yeah. If like for a penny, you can get like all these Hell different yes. tapes and whatnot. Oh yeah, kept the ghetto in debt for yeah, years. Man. <laughs> I, I, like I don't think he ever paid the full price for that stuff. Like I don't think anybody did. <laughs> right? That's why they're not here anymore. <laughs> yeah. And like I would order stuff in his name, and then like when the stuff came in, like I make sure I watch the mail when it came in, and then I get like my tapes and CDs and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And like, and he never knew about it because like, he you know, got out of school later, or he had a job at the time, and like, he never knew about it. And you know, I was wondering, man, where am, how come my tapes are never coming in? What's wrong? I'm like, meanwhile, I'm in the background bumping my stuff, I'm like. Hey, where'd you get that stuff at, man? Like, oh, a friend let me borrow it. Yeah, that's what happened. And those and those early songs, like those early like musical journeys, were with like what what kind of music? You said rock. You said like what like who who specifically? Well, like say early '90s grunge, like uh, yeah, you know, Stone Temple Pilots, you know, okay. Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, stuff like that, and uh, yeah. R&B, like uh, Mint Condition, Jodeci. Uh, that's Shy, a crazy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, that's a crazy like dichotomy though, right? Because you're like those two don't necessarily go. Those people don't hang out with each other, right? You know what I mean. So like, how were you balanced? Or do you, were you just too young to like have that social aspect yet? Were you just taking in the music first? Yeah, I was taking the music and like those guys like they had a lot of melody in them. Like they kind of complained about the same things, but like some sound like they're crying, some sound like they were screaming. But right. essentially right. it was the same thing. Like I got was you, got you. So I with, hear with songs, there's there's only two types of songs ever. You're either bragging or complaining. Yeah. Any yeah, song yeah. ever goes into that. So 
I felt they're kind of in the same spectrum with the things that they were talking about, you know, and I, it, it just spoke to me at the time. It just made sense to you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so obviously, so, so far we're painting a picture of a kid. I mean, were you a good kid? Were as far as like, would your, <laughs> would your, would the adults around you go like, yeah, he's a pretty good kid. From what they knew. Yeah. 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 For <laughs> yeah. what they knew. Of course. Of yeah. course. But, yeah. um, I was curious, you know, and okay. So now you as an adult, you have kids, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So you as a dad, looking back at yourself, were you a good kid? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know when my kids are quiet that they're up to something. Cause when I was quiet, I was, those wheels were turning. I was like, what yeah. can I get into? You know, yeah. it's like, I, kn- I know what to look out for with them. Like when I hear them not doing anything, I'm like, uh, I got to go check on them. They're, up to, they're, they're about to cause some chaos right now. What kind of, um, what kind of trouble would a uh, young diesel get into? Um, like what was, what were the things where, when you look back now and you were like, oh man, that was kind of dumb. I shouldn't have been doing that. Like what, what were those kind of things? I like taking things apart, especially uh, like electrical things. I gotcha. like seeing what make things tick. So you're just breaking you know? everything. Yeah. You know, like, and, <laughs> and like growing up in the religion that I did, like a lot of stuff wasn't allowed. So like all the right. things I liked, like right. comic books, um, you know, action figures, video games, certain movies, martial arts, all the stuff that I loved. Yeah. It was banned for me. So I'd have to like sneak and do it. And like I would get in trouble or it whooped gotcha. every time, but it was worth it to me. Like, yeah, it, it made me love that stuff even more. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a weird thing, right? Like, you know, you're you're a parent now and it's it's weird. Like you almost know the stuff we don't want them to be into or you don't want the kids to be into. It's such a weird balance on how to like because you don't want to take it all away because then they're like, they're for sure going to do it. Mm. But then you don't want to give them too much. You know, I mean, it's such a weird I, I, I have. My, one of my best friends, Eddie, has uh, two young kids, and I'm watching him raise his kids. And uh, it's been real interesting to watch like that thing because, you know, like I knew him as he's my home. I know everything he's done. You know what I mean? And then like watch him with his kids, and I'm like, yeah, what? Yeah, it's a different thing, man. Like you feel for your parents. You're like, oh, yeah. that's what they were. That's what they were worried about. Like you know I mean? still call her up and apologize sometimes. Like, hey, mom, I was kind of tripping that one time. You know? Right on. <laughs> okay, so um, you're into that kind of music. Are you other than like organized like chorus or stuff like that? Are you? stepping out into your own as far as like yo this is something i might want to do yet yeah yeah well like i was also like a big fan of like weird al at the time right okay like like the parody just like always just stuck out to me like it was like a creative interpretation of how you see the song or whatever yeah so um i would like hear songs on the radio that i really loved and like i would start like singing my own lyrics to it or you know trying to be funny or just changing it up to something that like was uh, relatable to me like some girl's name in the song that i changed it to a girl's name that i liked or whatever as i yeah. sing along to it and so like i start like you know trying to jot down my own lyrics and make my own versions of these songs and was this and like were you doing this like um how do you say like was it in public you know what i mean like um, were you to like myself yeah it's it's to myself or like you know probably the one friend that I had around the time, like I, I let them hear it or whatever, or like, or like my brother would find my notebook or whatever and say, Hey, what's this? Right. And, uh, you know, the, got the whole thing about that, but um, yeah, it was just something that I, I did like to have my creative interpretation of the things I like. Cause I felt that was like paying it, it homage, you know? Like, yeah, that's how yeah. I, I felt like I was giving respect to it. But, but it wasn't like um, at that point where you, Again, were you like, this is something that could be like my job? You know what I mean? Like, is this, were you there yet? Um, no, it was just something that gave me some confidence and gave me like an, an outlet for something. Like I, I wanted to be a wrestler since I was a kid. That was like my big goal for the longest time. Okay. And this was like something that like, I felt that like I can do and like, and I could keep it like hidden to where like, I wouldn't have to ever show it or, you know, so I, I had performance anxiety. I was just, just shy. Oh, I couldn't wow. even talk to people. So this is something I can do that I can keep in my head and that I could, you know, flourish in. And like, whenever I was ready, I could, you know, show the world, but it, it took years of like, just keeping it to myself and like, and really honing and practicing. Okay. So let's then, then that's good to know. So let's, um, you go to you go to high school? Yeah. 
Okay, so what were obviously those are like some important times in your life. Like mm. we're going from junior high, you have that interest, you're starting to play with it. You're in high school. This is kind of where you're starting to mold where like who you're going to be and like who you who you want to be. Like who was that for you in high school? Like what were you if you if you had to say you were working on yourself, what were you working on? I was just working on just like being being seen you know like yeah not being a prisoner in my own mind because of my own like insecurities and just perceptions i have of myself you know i know a lot of people deal with that especially as teens you know the they they talk about people being the awkward teen like no maybe it's just being the teen because like mm. you're not a kid anymore but you're not an adult you're trying to find your place in the world trying to find your voice and uh you're gonna go through a lot of things in high school that's gonna like either traumatize you or, or shape you in a, in a, in a good way, you know? So, um, like the few people like that would like, there that song just spoke to me, you know, I was about getting rejected having crushes and dealing with those, those awkward situations. And like, I'm like, hold up, this is me right now. Like, and I could, I could, I could definitely do this and relate to it. So like that, that really, you know, drew me into hip hop and, and really, um paying attention more to like to the rap side of stuff where because like i the gangster stuff i couldn't like i couldn't vibe with it just you know i grew up around it all my brother my brother my cousins all my friends you know they were into it but like the song that spoke out to me was like well, it was past me by that let me know that hey there's a lane in here for people who think like me and who go through the same things i go through you know so right. that like influenced me to want to like start writing my own experiences and like yeah. trying to you know navigate through that and see how I can make it better and the repetition and you know hopefully one day I'll be able to get my voice out there and show people that hey I you know I, I matter too like I'm I'm here you know see me these are you a sensitive dude man I mm. didn't I didn't know I didn't know this okay so let me um I want to because again from the outside looking in this is what I don't know if you've thought if you think about this a lot or or if it's I'm sure it's been brought to your attention at least some point. But from the outside looking in, I see what I assume to be a very confident dude who's uh, a great a big presence, especially on stage. Like I've mm. seen you perform um, your music, your you don't waste a lot of words. You know what I mean? Like you, you're definitely somebody who wants to say something, you know? Mm. Um, but I didn't know, this is why I love, this is why I love this doing the show. It's because yeah. um, I think it's important that people understand that even with all of that behind that, there's, it's still just a person trying to work shit out. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and I think as artists, one of the things that's important is for artists to hear that the professional side of this job is being able to maintain that, maintain yourself pretty much. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's the ability to um, not allow all like you, you're working on a bunch of shit. That's some heavy shit, you know, trying to be who you are and trying to be your authentic self. That's some heavy shit. I'm, I mm -hmm. can relate. I know that that's not like an overnight thing. You know, that's, yeah. that's a lifetime of work. Um, but then you're able to transition on to stage and do the job that you're called to do. And I think that's important for artists because I hate to see when artists get, um, I call it, they like start hugging, they hug the sadness. You know what I mean? Yeah. As if it's like, it makes you cooler somehow because you're in pain, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's a, it's a dangerous game to play with. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you obviously, you know, you listen to grudge music, you know, Nirvana, you know, like, you know, all the, the stories, the countless stories that we've heard of artists who seem to embrace all the bad side. How do you seem, because again, you seem to be from the outside, someone who you seem generally happy all the time. I, when I see you are, yeah. how I mean, much it took of, a long, it took a long uh, way, ways yeah. for me to get to where I am now. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it was, it was some rough uh, um, upbringings, but um, so when I started rapping, like, it wasn't like, I'm just like, you know, you know, the most outgoing guy at the age of 16, right? Yeah. You know, so uh, I remember my teacher, um, uh, was Fenor, she, she came to me and she saw that I was writing on a piece of paper and we had a, a Black History Month talent show coming up. Yeah. And she's like, well, why don't you join? 
And like, just the thought of that was just terrifying. I'm like, you mean in front of the whole school? They, they've never heard me <laughs> like even talk before. Like, you want me to go through all this? She's like, yeah, she can do it. So like, what, what do you got to lose? You know, and, um, and I learned a very important lesson. Like, sometimes you have to just, you know, fall into your fear. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're, it's very true. You're going to be, you're going to be scared anyways. You, whatever's going to happen, people are going to think we're going to think anyways, but, but just do it, you know? So like, I mean, I got like a, a beat from the homie and I, I wrote something down that I'd you know, been practicing for a while. And so I go onto the stage in front of my whole school who's never heard me talk before or anything. They just thought I'm that, you know, that quiet guy that sits by himself and works in the cafeteria. They knew nothing about my musical ability probably didn't even know my name you know yeah, and i get yeah. up there you know you can hear a pin drop on the microphone uh -oh. and then the beat the beat drops and i don't know what happened but like it i turned into like the incredible hulk and like i just went at it with so much energy and finesse i remember like i sang some high notes at the end of the song after they're done spitting my bars and and when i was done it was a deafening silence and then the whole place just like erupted and they were just screaming and loving me. And I'm like, what? What is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? And like, I went from being like, you know, just like a, a dust in the sand, you know? Just, yeah. And from there on, like, like people were like, they were just loving me. They come up to talk to me. Girls were like complimenting me and like flirting with me. And people wanted to like be my friend and whatnot. And it was all very weird, you know, for a kid that's been like a loner for like most of his young life and whatnot. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, just because I came up here like and and you know, like talked about my feelings and said it in a kind of cool way, you guys, you guys, you know, mess with me now? Okay, bet. Okay. And like, and it gave me like it gave me that confidence, like, okay, maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe I have something to say too. Yeah. And maybe other people feel the same way. Were you um is it safe to say you were hooked from that moment? Oh yeah, yeah. I was I yeah. was a, a junkie for it, you know. For just that, I mean, that instant gratification that can that can change around for anybody's sure. day. That for can sure. make them want to. That can make them want to live. You can save somebody's life just by. Oh, them without a, a doubt. You know? Without a doubt. Did you? Um, how were you? Like, how were you creating at that time? Like, what what was the process? Like, were you? Did you have a studio? Like, what were you? What were you? Were you producing? Like, what was going on? How were you creating your songs? I had a like a hand me down computer from my brother. It was called the Black Wolf. I think something like that. It had like a five hundred megabyte hard drive. Okay. Like, I we were I had a real audio and uh, I I would take like a, the sound recorder program that you would get, uh -huh. and like you get like ten seconds of it. Yeah. And you'd have to like I was so I would get like loops from like something online, and um. I would just like insert the loop into itself over and over and over and over until I got like about two or three minutes worth of a beat. And I had like this little like $5 computer mic. I remember I, I cut a, like a finger off of a glove and put it over the, the mic and put a rubber band. And that was like my wind guard. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would just um, rap to the best of my ability over, over this beat. And then like I'd mix the file into it and, Nine times out of ten, I don't know. It was it was it was offbeat. I don't know if it was just me for me, you know, mixing it in a certain right, way, right, or right, that's right. just how I was rapping at the time. But yeah, I'd have those little things, and I'd I'd use a real audio to encode it, and I would put it on AOL and see if oh, people wow. liked it or not. So yeah. you were you were you were putting it out like from the jump. Yeah, this that's is dope. like um, say mid to late nineties around that time. You know, we were checking out and seeing like people around the world um, doing the same thing. We like collaborate or um, get into like, those uh, those uh, those chat rooms where you can like text battle people. Right, right, you right. Know, right. So we we're going back and forth, or we call people up. Or, uh, call my my cousin and I. We call people up on three way. We like battle over the phone and you know see how people were doing like in, in other parts of the world or whatnot. And like I I know I ran that phone, but love my mom hated me for it. But like <laughs> it was really cool seeing how people around the world could like vibe with the same thing that, that we were vibing with and that gave us confidence, you know? Wait, so, okay, we need to, we need to fill in something. I just thought about this. So when, obviously there had to be some friction with the idea that you were kind of pursuing this um, because of just the general rules at home, 
yeah. right? Like how how did that? You know what I mean? How did you deal with that? I do it when my mom was at work. You know, yeah, that's, that's I you know stuff to like hide it. She knew like I was like getting into more and more talent shows and whatnot, and she didn't necessarily like the type of stuff I was doing, but you know she saw that it gave me confidence and it made me happy. So she didn't like necessarily like vocally support it, but she wasn't against it. You gotcha. know, she didn't like forbid me from doing it. You know, so I'm, and like just just from her core beliefs or whatever. So I mean, I'm still like. I'm grateful for that, you know, like, even though I know you don't vibe with it, you still, you still accept me and still, you know, That's al- allow me to do this. So she wasn't like a roadblock or anything? No, no, no. Okay, so you're developing music, um, you know, you're developing in a, it in a way that, you know, a lot of people start off, you know, just kind of with what they have in front of them. Um, as you started learning your craft more, how did it because it because that's the other thing you're not even at this point in your in the story you're not even really socializing it yet you're because you're still on the computer yeah. in your room yeah. you're still doing that so when yeah. does it start to like for you noticeably start leveling up as in at least you being able to like construct you know songs and albums and stuff when did that start to happen for you well it was a lot of uh repetition and failing yeah you know i didn't know anything about anything yeah. i didn't know about writing songs i didn't i don't know i like music i like the way it sounded and how different parts of the song are from what i can know so i just i just kept writing over and yeah. over and over and over and over and over i probably have like over in my lifetime over like two thousand songs i've written yeah you know, yeah maybe a, a chunk of those have been recorded or whatever but i just kept failing like i had to keep learning um different little steps that would bring me up higher and higher by doing the wrong things by, you know, seeing if I can work this program or seeing if I can rap over this style of beat. Yeah. Um, seeing if uh, I can get on a stage and, you know, will I run out of breath if I try to rap the whole song or do I need to do this in a different way or whatever. So like, I, besides like the music, I would like get into more and more like talent shows or we start rapping at school, like and, and battling each other and whatnot. And a lot of times I sucked at what I did, you know, from, from, from what I think, you know, other people liked it, but I thought I sucked at a lot of things. And that. Why though? Wait, it wasn't up obviously, to my standards. Yeah. obviously you were comparing it to something. What were you comparing it to? Well, like, you know, people like I, I liked, you know, I was starting into, I was getting to like a lot of like battle rappers, like in underground MCs. Oh, uh, got you, know, you uh, got you. So I was like, man, like, I want to be as dope as them. Like, what uh, they do is just incredible and magical. And I want to be as dope as them. Like, my stuff isn't as dope as theirs. And, you know, like, you, you can get caught up in that, especially, like, in sure. rap. Like, like you want to be as good as the next person or at least ju- be just as, like, effective as the other person. You right, know? right, right, right. Yeah, it's oh, a dangerous, man. it's a dangerous, uh, well, that's why, yeah, that's why I was asking you about it. Because I, I, I wonder, I love to hear people's stories on how they, like, develop. Because you, you have a very, like, original feel about, you know, the music you make. And that's dope. You know what I mean? Like, mm. um, it's always like I, I like I always tell people on the show, like, if that was, like, up for debate, you wouldn't even be on the show. You know what I mean? Like, you're mm. on the show because you obviously make something that's very original. It's something that we, you know, we preach here on this show. If you've listened to the show, you know we're big on that. Um, p- people finding their own voices. But you obviously did it like other MCs um, and, and performers, you came up and you kind of looked around with what, what was around you. And then you started to obviously develop. Well, the thing is, right. You know, this now is, mm. is when we're younger, we think that you can copy something. And the, re- yeah. the reality is you just, you can't, it's never going to sound like, dude, I used to have this, I had a, a rap partner when I was really young and uh, he was fucking dope bro he was just like one of those like kids who hung out in the hood and like wasn't really trying to be a rapper but could freestyle his ass off just had you know what i mean one of those naturally like damn this motherfucker and uh he would hear like we would record shit and obviously there would be static or background because we had no i i don't even think we were using plugins at the time it was literally just the vocal and the fucking beat um and he'd be like, yo, how can we can't make this sound like Tupac? <laughs> and I'm like, man. I don't know, man. Like, And I really didn't know. Like, I was like, I don't know. We're doing what he's doing. He's recording. We're recording. It doesn't sound the same. 
And it it, yeah. it was so, but he was so, that was like his like bar, right? And he was like, I got to be at least at that. And it pretty much almost stopped him from rapping because he was just like, yo, I'm never going to sound like that. You know what I mean? And, but he yeah. didn't the whole time not know um, that, uh, that you were putting out. You knew that people were into your stuff. Like you said, you had people that were into your stuff. Was it, was were you aware of that like were you be, did you believe them you know what i mean like did you believe people when they were like yo man that your shit's dope um i believe they felt that i just didn't see how <laughs> that they liked it you know like yeah i, yeah. I knew i knew that some of the stuff like that like, it was like good you know i like, just i could just see the reactions on them i'm just like it was like a state of disbelief for me like man why do you guys vibe with this so hard i'm like i must be doing something right so let, let me let me keep building on that. You know, let me keep seeing if I can do something else. And like, and that kept making me like, want to like give, give more oohs and ahs and like say more uh, intricate things and yeah. you know, shock the crowd. And like, you just, you know, keep uh, you know reliving that moment from that, that talent show where, where people just erupted. Like I, I was a junkie for it. I became addicted to it, you know? So um, we, we lived in a time where like, there's was a lot of like braggadocio, in in the music you know like a lot of you know a lot of battle rap a mm -hmm. lot of you know underground lyricists have just you know s you know spit bars and all that bravado and whatever um and, and people like they they just they they loved it and so like i wanted to be like that you know maybe just because i i felt i didn't have that that sense of um you know self and uh self-love for a while so like yeah. it, it really it, it really like just it became like a drug and like, I just, I just wanted to keep doing it more and more and more. Like, and you, you really never lose that, you know, like after a while you become numb to it, you yeah. know, like it's, yeah. it can make you slack off. It can, it can make you, uh, you know, not try as hard. So like, I think the fact that like, I didn't believe people, you know, when they told me that I was dope and that I didn't like, you know, my music 100% that kept me um, wanting to create, better and and do more and more and more and more like and i still had to, i've still to this day have never been 100 percent satisfied with anything that i've put out yeah yeah and because of that i try harder and put out better music yeah you yeah know? i mean i, I think there's there's something about people um who seek mastery you know what i mean because that's like what you're doing you're you're seeking yeah. this thing that you know we've only ever heard people talk about we've never known anybody to actually grab it right but it is I've always called it like the most honorable, um, like one of the most honorable ways to spend your life is to try to master something because you learn so much about yourself and others doing that. Right. Because yeah. a lot of the times, um, like you've already described, you have to kind of sit and, um, walk down this path that is completely by itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're by yourself. You're not nobody. It's hard to describe the things like, you know what I mean? I don't know how often you're able to have um, like conversation, even conversations like these, you know, mm. um, where there's an audience and at least another person who can relate to exactly what you're talking about. Because um, yeah. I know that it's one of the reasons I even started doing this show because of the same thing you're talking about. Like it, it was hard to relate to someone who say like has no ambition to 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 choose like a life and art it's mm -hmm. a weird you know what i mean it's a weird it's a weird thing like did you obviously pursuing this comes with a ton of stuff um it comes with politics it comes with um you know lack of representation it comes with cornball promoters it comes mm -hmm. with and and it comes with on the flip side, it comes with some like some of the greatest people you'll ever meet in your life, right? Mm. Are, are also people that I've met through art, right? For sure, for sure. The the best, yeah. in fact, the best people I've ever met in my life, I met them through yeah. art. You find um, your tribe like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for you, what were some of the early obstacles of trying to get, like you said, noticed? Yeah, um, I was poor. You know, like we yeah. the like the internet that we would eventually get, which was like like brand new at the time, whatever. Yeah. They're like I'd go through like free trials of, you know, AOL, you know, um, 
get the net zero uh all, all those <laughs> yeah. all those hours like I, yeah. I i carefully use all those hours <laughs> up on, on everything and just like you know i didn't have a car i couldn't go to shows or open mics or buy equipment or yeah. whatever else like from like mowing yards or like working in the cafeteria i like get like little money here and there and like and i could spend it on um you know, various things I need, even getting quality headphones or like if I could ever afford a beat, you know, uh, I, I'd, I'd buy that from somebody if I could. But like, um, I just, at the time, I, I felt I didn't have the resources to like properly invest in what I do because I knew I had to go to that next level of quality, of uh, you know, branding or just, just on myself. I knew I had to like have better clothes when I go out and perform, you know, instead of like yeah. wearing, you know, my hand-me-downs or clothes that just didn't fit me anymore or, or my, my pro wing shoes and this and that. Like I, there were like certain things that like I knew that I, I needed and just like, you know, before I turned 16, like I didn't have, um, in my eyes, the means to do that unless it was like, you know, most of my yard with like I into myself so I can you know go places so I can do more things or whatever and you know we didn't really have like a community at least that I knew of like from my age bracket we just yeah. had you know schools like different schools would go hang out at spots and they battle each other or um, somebody had like an uncle or dad with a studio and they can release stuff and they're all trying to get stuff on the radio and the radio don't want to play any of anybody's music and right right so like I was poor for a very very long time but like that should never be an excuse. You got to like find your ways around your, your obstacles, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. it's, it's interesting that, uh, that, um, you said that finding your ways around like your obstacles, it, it's such, I feel like people forget like how huge of, of the, of the journey that is, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, especially in art, like, it, it's just not enough to just put something out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you gotta, you gotta put your boat in the water and you gotta sail that shit. You gotta mm -hmm. put a, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta like, defend that boat. From you the gotta attackers, defend the you know? boat. Yeah. You, yeah. It's, and it's constant, right? Like it's constant. And you're a person who I know, I know, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but it, again, from the outside looking in, you definitely, um, I feel like there's, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Is that, is that something that you, you were conscious of the, like the social, like getting on flyers, getting on shows. Like when did that start to like, like click for you? Like, Oh, I need to be doing that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you reach the limits that you, that you get to when, uh, from, you know, from, from just doing the same that you've been doing the whole time. And if you don't see results from that, then you know you have to progress. You gotta do something different. You gotta expand it. You know, if you if it, a lot of it comes from like people overcoming their own hurdles, thinking that their stuff is worthy enough to, you know, take mm -hmm. it on the road or be heard by other people or whatnot. Right, so once right. you get that out your head, once you you can fully invest not only your money but like your time and your effort and your belief and like being your biggest fan to think that it's worthy enough for other people to hear it then you got to take those appropriate steps. Like, you know, I graduated high school, so I didn't have that, that huge, you know, audience of people that I could, you know, market to or get my name out to. It was like, okay, well, yeah. I started to go into the workplace and that became my social pool, whatever. I'm like, okay, well now I can, you know, I got some money now I'm from working. I can, I can get out there in the world. I can go to some different places. Um, what, what can I do now? Should I start recording the stuff and trying to make a CD, you know, so I, take the printer at home and, you know, slap some stickers on the CD and like start giving it out to people. Yeah. Uh, seeing if they'll want to buy it or just going out to the beach or to Walmart or whatever, and just start handing like, Hey, I rap. I think it's pretty good. Here you go. If you want to give me money for it, that's cool. But like, yeah. I just want you to hear it. You testing know, like, the market, basically yeah. testing the market. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that's, that's, it's kind of tough to do. Like when you're a shy person, even if you're a confident person, you go to somebody and say, Hey, look, I, I uh, spit my feelings out o over some beats and I made it try to sound kind of cool. Do you need that in your life? Because like the <laughs> <laughs> the point is like like people like with any type of sales, they don't really need certain things. You have to sell them on it. Like when you go to buy a car, you don't need the car that they're trying to sell you. Right. But they're gonna do the best they can to convince you that it's a good thing in your life. And if they come up with a good enough approach, then 
you're going to buy the car. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's crazy because, um, man, I, I love this. is Again, this is why I love doing this show. I love when I when, when you first reached out about doing the show and we first started talking about doing the show. Um, I know you said you had listened to the show for a minute, and, and thank you for that, by the way. Um, but uh, it, it's cool. Like, again, like I saw – this person with all this, I only saw the outside, right? And I only, mm. I only got to see you through your music pretty much. And I think it's important again, like, you know, this is, I think the value in shows like this is that we get to see like, yo, it's so much more complicated than just walking out on stage and yeah. like performing your song. You know what I mean? Like, and, and not just complicated logistically or like trying to get that together money wise, all that stuff. But just the the perseverance that it takes to not go, man, fuck, this is too hard. Because yeah, you hard. you you can wake up as an artist almost every day with that thought if you let yourself, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, like it's not easy. It's like people just think that you get on stage, you got a microphone, you just want to rap some stuff and try to be cool. Like you know, a lot of us, like we go through like ex- anxiety like <laughs> if i get booked for a place that like i don't know anything about the place i'm like okay let me research this place uh what type of yeah. a venue is it what type of shows do they have there how is their sound system yeah How's what's their the stage look like you know? yeah what's the parking yeah. like <laughs> everything like, do, I, like, do i gotta bring something in my trunk going out of town to this mm-hmm. place i mean how's this place gonna be how's the dj is you know how's the sound man do i need to bring a cd do i need to bring this yeah what type of song should i bring for this lineup so i can mesh in well with it you know how am i gonna talk on the stage is a song that i think is really dope recorded will it translate well in the performance like there's a lot of things that go into our heads before we even get there like if you ever see me at a show i'm extremely quiet because i'm before checking right out everything. yeah 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 you know what's crazy too is that uh um the the other part of that is that the way you learn all those things for people who are not aware is you fail at them first yes like that's yes. literally how you find out like oh i should have brought a cd a CD, an MP3, a fucking mm-hmm. backup. All, all, I should have brought my hard drive. I should have brought my own laptop. I should have brought, like, all these different things you have to learn by doing the reps. And I think where people get disenchanted is because there are so many steps. But mm-hmm. I can't, I man, I can't emphasize. When I look back at things now, I'm like, yo, those were the best moments. Like, every yeah. time I learned something like that, those were the best. And they saved me time they save me money especially mm-hmm. money later on that should yeah. become super important to have already made those mistakes yeah. before the money starts getting in play because you don't want to make them after you know yeah. what i mean we all know of people who've done that and that ends horrible you yeah. know for for you did you um when did the because that's the other thing like you you're a dad you're a parent when did the family side start when what, at what point did that come into your life and how did that did that affect the, your approach of like pursuing this as a, you know, as a living, as, as something you want to do? Yeah. I mean, like it, they came like a little later in my life, like in like my late twenties when, uh-huh. when I got married. Um, and it was, uh, it taught me a lot about balance, mm-hmm. you know, cause uh, before it's like, I, I could uh, do what I want when I want, where I want and not have to like worry about anything. Like my wife at the time, you know, she would like come to me with shows and or if I threw a show, she'd be working the door or whatnot. And Yo. with that was like she's my road dog, you know. Did you meet her like so, in the scene or or like how uh, did you like I met her like in my personal life, like at work okay, and whatnot. Cool. But like cool. you know, she knew from the get go, like this is what I do and she was cool <laughs> yeah. with it and, and yeah. never like made me choose or uh played any of those games that, that can happen Bravo. when you when you date a non musician. So she I knew she was the one like from yeah, yeah. you know back then, you know. Uh but 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 yeah, like uh, balance, you know, like and then yeah. like when I had like my off nights from work, I was like trying to hit up shows all the time. But like you know, I also had a relationship with somebody that I lived with, and I didn't want to like you know take away time from her. And it's kind of hard to bring like your girlfriend to every single rap show for sure. Because for sure. you know, if you're not a musician yourself, you're gonna get yeah. bored really quickly. You right. know, so like it's and like you just said before a show, you're so constant. It's not like you can entertain somebody or like yeah, you're not you're not good company. Yeah, you're going through your yeah. you're going through your system at that yeah. point. You're you're mentally preparing to get on stage and 
hopefully not bomb in front of strangers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? They're yeah. like, hold on, don't talk to me right now. Like, look, yeah. I'm gonna listen to my set in the car. Just let me let me practice over and over and over. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. And that can't be fun for for the no, significant no, no, no. other, right? I like bless her heart. She probably is like she heard my songs like way more than, than oh, I've wow. heard my songs, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she's heard all the horrible mixes and seen all the bad shows. So bless her, she was she was a trooper, you know. Like we're yeah. we're not together anymore, but like I give her all like the credit in the world for all that she's been through with me, like in in my music career, you know. Yeah, and what about the um? How many kids do you have? Two. So uh, uh how old are they? Uh, one's turning six, another one's turning three. Okay, so yeah, your 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 kids are about the same age as, as our producer Hip Hop Eddie. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I know that age pretty well because um, I'm the uncle. I got to fucking take care of these kids all the yeah. time. But uh, he, um, it's it's cool that age because they're so, um, and they act like they don't, but they pay attention to everything. Yeah, they're like these. They little, really. They really are like these little sponges. You know what I mean? Yeah, they encompass the world around them, and they, they grow up with it. They become familiar with it. Like yeah, you know, like the technology. Like they. My daughter, she's five, but she can navigate through like oh, anything man. on my my tablet, my phone. She knows how to connect yeah. everything, you know. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. It's there's no doubt. My um, yeah, for sure. My nieces and nephews are more at, at five or more educated on just the internet in general, as opposed mm. to like my parents, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not even close. Like they're 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 into stuff. The other day, I was watching. Eddie's son play on the internet and he was watching some dude watch the internet watching like some guy playing again like right right and, and it's, <laughs> it's the craziest thing yeah and at first I was like one of the things I've definitely tried to work on over the last few years is really like understand the idea of like how these trends start and but also like how people socialize and how that changes through the years you know it's not the same as we are like mm. the the new generation it's you know they get dragged through the mud for not being social not being you know but they are the most social you know they're it's just yeah. in in person to them is doesn't mean the same thing as it did to us right like you used to like yeah. looking for music and that actually meant you might get your hands dirty now yeah. that literally just means it's a swipe or you know and that's fine. You know what I mean? It, it really is. It really is fine. It's, I think we panic a little bit too much on that as if it's not natural, but the reality yeah. is even you, like we can use you as an example, somebody who was, who was uh, raised in a stricter household that didn't necessarily like encourage your technological side. You mm. naturally just became technologically, you know, advanced with your stuff because that's how yeah. your brain works. It was that was nature. That was going to happen no matter what. You know what yeah. I mean? And so when I see kids that are into that kind of stuff now, I, before it used to worry me, but you know now I see, especially in this time, and it's something I want to talk to you a little bit about. Like especially mm -hmm. in the time yeah. that we're going in right now, we're seeing the youth use technology better than any generation has ever used it. You know, yeah. like they're organizing with it, they're speaking to each other, they're changing the world with technology. And yeah. I, and it's weird to me because I it's not that long ago that I remember people going like, this is the devil. It's the devil. The Internet is the devil. Right. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, number I mean, one tool. yeah, yeah. It, it might be the devil, but it's God, too. And it's fucking it's nature. It's yeah. it's it's everything. You know, well, it's like, us. Like people like they, they tend to fear what they don't understand. Like maybe they fear that they're going to get left behind or like they're yeah. not. That's they can't it, adapt right? with it, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, the, and like the younger generation, like maybe we're not supposed to understand, mm -hmm. you know, what's the part of their world because this is starting to become their world now. Exactly. We're start, we're gonna start to fade out, you know, yeah. sooner than later. Yeah. You know, so what, what they do, hopefully it's gonna be a better thing. It's gonna make improvements, you know, in in comfort, technology, the way we can communicate, the way we can see the the truth of things. Yeah. How we can. Uh, um you know react with other people how we can interact and all that stuff you know like i think it's dope you know like I, i'm trying to like stay up on game myself and like be as like you know, technologically as adept you know because that's the way the world is you know the yeah. old way the old way of the world always dies off yeah you know yeah. in various ages yeah i've always i've always kind of in fact my uncle told me um like a lot of my music comes from 
my uncle, he was a, a a band leader. He played bands for forever growing up, but he always preached to me that like, um, uh, you know, age is like a uh, growing old is a choice, right? Mm. Like you can become older. Everybody becomes older, but being old, like that's, a, that means you just stop paying attention, you yeah. know? And he's just like, why would I ever want to, why would I ever want to, I, I like new stuff. And he's like, yeah. so when new stuff comes out, he's like, I want to be, I want to be excited about it. And the only yeah. way I can be excited about it is that I have to kind of know what's going on. And, yeah. and, and he's like, you know, he's like saying that like you've grown old or you don't understand anymore literally just means you just gave you up. Gave up. You yeah. gave up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, where, where were you? Um, I, I, yeah. Cause I definitely want to talk to you about this. Where were you when the pandemic started shutting things down uh well i'm a school bus driver by day yeah so you know i'm picking up my kids from the school and like everyone's panicking i'm seeing people like run out the school oh wow teachers grabbing their kids and like just getting out of there and like and like our cb radio is going off talking about this school's closing down this school's closing down this school is closing down i'm like oh crap this is it we're here oh wow you know like you know from you know watching every single uh movie about you know epidemics and you know zombie viruses and everything else going on you know the, mm-hmm. the paranoid mind starts you know reacting like oh crap is this it is this, is this the end of days what, what, what's going on yeah uh let, let me get home let me let me get let me see if my kids are all right you know you want to just you just want to drop everything and like and like protect your own at that point you know like the survival instincts start kicking in all those those doomsday preparations to, you know, you start, you know, wanting to implement them and whatnot. That's why I see people like they were panic buying like all the toilet paper and you know, yeah, canned yeah. goods and rice and whatnot. It was, it was crazy. Like it instantly went like in one day, like the world changed once like they, once they shut the schools down, that's when the world changed. Yeah. That's when it said, Hey, yeah. you know what? We, we, we got to adapt. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard a lot of parents um, pinpoint that as like the, like the the eye opener, like the thing you yeah. didn't think would would happen happened. So okay, so um oh well, first everybody's good. Your family's good. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Oh. Like there's, I have a you know few friends that have you know you know fallen victim to it, and people that yeah. I know and whatnot. Um, but like my my immediate family, like so far we've been good. We we'll able to keep my kids out of school. They will be home with them. Yeah. Um, you know it's, it's it's been a blessing so far. You know this. I used to never have time. Yeah, never. I have to invent free time, and now I have a plethora of it. Yeah, it's you know? it, it, it's interesting. I've been talking um, since we started doing video again, uh, or we started doing video at all. Um, I, I've been talking yeah. to a lot of the guests, and and uh, we all kind of been agreeing that, like, yeah, it, my observation has been like most of my creative friends, mm. they they're all right. Like they're you know what I mean. They kind of yeah. like being by themselves already. They they already they enjoy the fact that they get more free time with people they love and stuff. That's the kind of stuff they're in. However, my like very, very social friends, I feel for them. You know, they're, they're, they're hurt right now. Like I I have friends that are like just dying to see anybody, you know what I mean? Like, um, and, and I know how tough that is. So I, I definitely feel, uh, empathy for that, but where you are, you know, being a creative and being, um, under these circumstances now that are like, you know, genuinely out of our control, w- did it hit you? Did it hit you in a way where you weren't creative? Because you're still putting music out. You just put out some music. In fact, if you're listening yeah. to this, go to platformcollection.com right now, and, and his shit's on the front page. Um, hey, thank you. Uh, is it? Is it? Is it hard to create under these circumstances for you? No, no, no. If anything, like during this time, I think with a lot of people. Um, isolation forces you to sit with yourself Mm. and if you have demons you're either going to confront (laughs) them and beat them or they're going to have a a festival so uh it depends on what you do with that you have to really sit and stew with things like at work or going out and being social or performing or doing whatever you do in life you can distract yourself from like your issues and like you know being in isolation you don't had the luxury of being distracted all the time so like mm-hmm. you're really gonna have to you know you know work on yourself or at least you know be aware of yourself yeah you know so 
I like, well, I really love to make music, but I have a lot of like, you know, worries going on. Like, okay, well, you know, how my finances going to be? Am I ever going to go back to work? Are my kids going to be okay? Yeah. Um, you know, they're going to you know split their time between my house and their mom's house. Like, who's going to be around them? All that. Like, and then you know, being like a single dad again, I'm like, okay, well. I'm kind of lonely, you know, do I holler at people? Is it safe to like try to spit at somebody, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. can I die over a booty call right now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like what's, yeah, you know, what, apparently what the do? answer is yes, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, all, all that, all that frustration like builds up and uh, like the EP I just dropped, it was like kind of tackling some of the issues like of, um, you know, dealing with those what ifs and mm. not being at your best because like, you know, a lot of us, you know, either we either took our time to really work on ourselves and improve ourselves, get our diet right, work out. And then some of us kind of let ourselves go. We, we've gained some weight. We pick up some bad habits. We sure. fully invested into the whole idle hands ideology where you can find yourself bickering with people online more or just being upset about, whatever some for the right reasons some for whatever but you find yourself being more confrontational because the you know that old saying like i got time today like you really do have time yeah you know, yeah, to get yeah into it and like it really flesh things out yeah yeah so like that's what, like that ep was about just like um man like i really have some issues that i, I need to resolve and let me let me talk about it vent about it you know what that's, are that's um helping. i've heard you reference it, it i want you to clarify this for me because i've heard mm. you reference um in, in in reference to yourself, uh, mm. I've heard you call yourself a troll. Do you why mm. why do you feel like that? Why do you think you're you're a troll? Boredom. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, but I mean, do you think that you are? I want to say a troll. Purposely, because I, like to... I see you. I see you. Yeah. What I see your post. It's not like you're not saying like truthful things. Yeah. You know what I mean. I mean, it's to. I mean. Most of the times, like, out of boredom to get a reaction or whatnot, like, kind of uh -huh. stir up the pot. Like, I never, like, want to bully anybody or, you know, make anybody feel bad about themselves. Like, if I ever get pissed off and rant about something, it's usually because I think something, like, is an injustice that's happening or somebody's right. being a jerk or, yeah, you know, like, I, I, I stick up for the little guy. Yeah, I don't, morning, yeah, morning I later. definitely don't see you as a troll. Like, I was just, yeah. I was just wondering about that because I, I, I know that, um, people may think that because they think that you have a strong opinion about something or whatever, but you know, in researching for this show, as we do sometimes, mm. um, I mean, the things you're posting about are all like legitimate things to be posting about, you know what I mean? And, and when you're being funny, mm. it seems like you're, you're, I mean, that is one of the things and that it, it is something I want to tap into in a little bit about the funny side of you. You definitely have that. Mm. There's a humor to the things you like to do. Um, even how you present yourself, sometimes you're not afraid to poke fun at yourself, do self-deprecating things. Um, yeah. Is that? But yeah, I think that's all part of what you. If, I think if people call you a troll, they don't get you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just as from an outsider looking in. But um, on the comedy side, are are you a comedy fan? Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Uh, my my grandma, she installed that in me. Uh, she was cracking jokes on her deathbed. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like we're, we're all crying. She's up here trying to make us smile and laugh. Mm. So, like from a young age, like if I could, even if I'm saying an awkward joke when it's probably not the right time, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to make somebody laugh. Or like I just, I just can't refrain from you know being a goofball at times. But then that's just that's just how I am. Or like, or sometimes it's like to take the cool out of somebody if like they're fronting a little too hard. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's not my place. I'm like, yeah. Let me interject with something to keep you humble yeah but i mean all, it seems like also though that like you're aware it feels like you're aware that you're a funny dude because you put it in your art as well you know what i mean like it's not yeah. like you're not i i've seen i've seen the, like you put out awesome videos um Thank there's you. you you know even it's it feels like even when you're being serious you'll you'll say something like tongue-in-cheek um again like i guess it is to provoke uh, thought and i see that now but do you feel like do you in general see like the comedy aspect when you do do it as a part of your art like is it something like you look yeah, at yeah. other other people who do that and go like oh that's something I, I like that part 
Yeah, like, well, like, I like to be as transparent as possible. Uh-huh. You know, like, I'm, we're, we're human. You know, as, as well as I may think I rap, you know, I'm, I'm a human. You know, yeah. and I go through all those motions and all those feelings. And whatever there is to be about me, you're going to find out one way or another. Like I said, you can research. It's, it's my pages and all my social media aren't private at all. Right, right. So if there's something about me, you're going to find it. So I might as well control the narrative and deliver it to you in an entertaining way whatsoever. We all love to laugh. We're not like the hardest dudes all day every day you know like we have yeah. families we we watch movies that make us cry you know we we fall in love we go we go through all of that so like I, I transparent with my music and who i am as a person like online or offline because you're gonna find out anyways you know yeah and so yeah. Like, I, like, I like i i think I one of the things not to cut you off i, I think one uh-huh. of the things that um i met you through um noah james by the way i don't know if you remember mm. that but um I met you through Noah James. I know that Noah is one of those. I mean, we all know Noah, Noah the type yeah, of person, the some, individual yeah. that he is. Um, and, you know, he spoke highly of you. And that was cool. It, and it's one of those things, like I've always told people, like Noah, career-wise and like business-wise, has, has, has definitely contributed to making my life easier because I don't have to filter so many people. Like it's kind of just like, yo, do you like Noah? Yeah. No. I'm probably not going to like you. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty, yeah. it's, it's that simple. But again, he, he, he referred to you as someone who works really hard. You know what I mean? That's again, that's something that is noticeable from the outside. Um, because I, you know, I, I know as an artist, I feel like we don't do this for each other enough. Um, in that we don't just say these very obvious things and I'll say them to you right now what you're doing is working. It's working, whatever it is, it's working. So you're on to something you're, um, you are in conversations. I hear your name in conversations. So I think it's, I think that it, that's important. And I, I try to encourage more artists to do that with each other. Cause you know, we all hear shit. We all had, we all yeah. hear things that can help each other, but a lot of us just stay quiet on that shit. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, I think, if people figure out the idea or at least the, the concept that it, which I think has been proven many times, if you think you're going to be the one person to blow up and that's somehow going to mean more than the entire community blowing up, that's ridiculous. Right? Like yeah. in, in order for people to, for us to all kind of live the lives we want, we need everybody else to blow up. We need yeah, everybody else. We need that. You need to be working. If I'm not working, I need to be working. Yeah. If you're not working, you know what I mean? Like exactly. there's, there's you tons can't be of successful. Room. You can't be successful in a scene. If the scene isn't successful. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That you says know? more about you than you think it does. You know, yeah. like a lot of people think like, well, that just means I'm the best one. No, that means that you didn't contribute shit to your scene because yeah. you're not helping your scene when you have a platform. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you, know? you have to help create the market that you want to thrive in. Exactly. You have to be fully dude. invested into it. Exactly, dude. And I just want to, I just want to give you that compliment. I think that, um, thank you. It's really dope. I, I'm glad that we we finally got to do this. Um, but it is it is your first time, so um, we like to be polite on the show. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Is there anything you'd want to br- oh. you want to bring up on your first time on Crappy Awesome? Well, well, um, I would like to speak on behalf of my generation to the next generation and about them because a lot of people from my generation we uh we don't understand what these youngsters are doing but like they're so successful at it you know they're doing what feels right to them they're rebelling they're you know using their using their voice to you know make other people in their their world communities not feel alone and feel like they they can do something you know like i was one of those people like man what's up with all this auto tune or you know what's up with how they dress or this or that but like that's that's not for me to understand that and you know these youngsters they're gonna blow past us and they're gonna do amazing things and we have to do all we can to help support them um, teach them and we may not even be able to teach them they may need they may already know what they need to know they, we, yeah we're, we're probably going to learn more from them than they can from us for sure for sure you know and like it's it's our responsibility as like you know the elders to like just help create a lane for them you yeah. know let's, or let's pave to the just way. be there 
Yeah, yeah, just be yeah. their experience. Mm-hmm. Let them know they're not alone. You know, don't give them the cold shoulder because they may take yeah. your spot. They're going to take your spot. Yeah, that's the point. You? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, that's, we want them to get better. We yeah. want them to be better than us, you know? Yeah. And that means that we did our job properly if that happens, you know? If we if we destroyed the building as we leave it, where, where are they going to do their thing at? You know, who's going to remember what was in that building? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that- like, and... and that is that's um yeah man you the shit dude you the shit thank that's, you thank you likewise that's a that's a dope that I think that's a dope sentiment I think it's so important um I I also feel like you know I'm encouraged I, I definitely am sometimes I get worried about it but I definitely am encouraged speaking to people like yourself you know people like that come through the show like you know we're as much as we you know have things to pick and choose in our community especially in hip hop abroad like you know the greater hip hop community, um, man, we have a lot to celebrate. You know what I mean? Like we really have a lot yeah. to celebrate. I've never ever been around a community that is more understanding with each other. When, when there's love present, it is, it's, it's like nothing you'd ever experience. It's why we're so addicted to this world. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and it's something that I wish that all people can have. And I think they can. I think you can have it. It doesn't have to look like hip hop either. It can look like yeah. whatever the fuck you want it to look like. But there has to be um, some acknowledgement of each other. Like, just acknowledge that, yo, that person is doing yeah. something that is putting a smile on their face or someone else. We need that. We have to have that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, ha- you have to give them that sense that, like, you know, hey, I see you. I mean, just, just exactly. saying that alone or just being, that alone. feeling yeah. that, like, I see you. Like, oh, okay, thank you. That. You could think you've been working for 20 years or something, and then, like, uh, you think it's all for nothing, and then, like, one person you admire, like, tells you, hey, I, I like what you do. Yeah. Keep doing it. Like, it can Absolutely. give you all the motivation in the world. It can make you feel like it's all worth it, even if you never do something else again. Like, hey, you yeah. know what? It was all worth it. Because, like, you you get seen. That's that's sort of the, you know, we, we fail to realize that someone is always watching. Whether yeah. it's your neighbor, it's your important. family members, someone online, someone is always watching everything you do. And they might they not tell you or interact with you, but you could mean the world to them. It could be your dad, you know, your, yeah. your co-worker, whatnot. You could mean the world to them. It could and save so, a life. It could Real save shit. a life, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we, we uh, I believe, like, we should do the most we can for, like, the people that aren't here anymore that would yeah. love to have these opportunities. Like, I've had many friends in the past my best friend died five years ago a few other friends have died the past few years and like I, I feel like it's selfish to not live up to my full ability to um you know share the same examples that, that they've shared with me and like yeah. you know really pay it forward um I, I just want to like to, to live fully and show people that you could you could really um just flourish in life by being yourself, by being a good person, by, you know, living your dreams and not wasting a single moment, you know, because there's some of us that, 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 that just can, you know, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not even promised today. We got lucky to even yeah. be here today. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely, man, dude. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. Follow everything this young man does. It, it's a, it's, it's always refreshing to like receive confirmation once you have a, the conversation you know what I mean? It's it's cool to see like, OK, yeah, this this was a good pick. This is a great dude. Um, man, I, I, I know it's your first time. I know you've been waiting to come on the show for a minute. You're finally here. Um, and now you're an alumni. You're an official crappy, awesome alumni, so, which means that you have an open door now to come back whenever you want to come back. Um, oh, nice. Uh, again, if people are, uh, are listening to this on the day this comes out, he has a new video that just recently dropped. That is a very powerful statement. You want to talk about that? The video you just dropped? Yeah. Uh, uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, man, like I originally wrote that song like about four years ago. I remember it was like right after, uh, Alton Sterling and uh, a few others mm-hmm. were, were you know, killed by the police and whatnot. Yeah. And I just noticed a trend of people, chastising those that were outraged by it mm. you know then they had a counter argument or they would you know victim shame and try to find all the dirt they can on people that are being killed and whatnot i'm like you know who really really should be upset about this 
people that are dying, yeah, yeah. you know, those yeah. are the people that really should be upset about this. Like I've been harassed by cops. I've had friends and family that have gone through it with all that. Uh, going up to San Bernardino, you can't avoid it. There's crooked cops everywhere. And people saying that, oh, you should just comply or they're just a thug anyways and whatnot. I'm like, how is that really fucking helping? You know, like, yeah. come on now. Like, how is that really going to help us? Like if, if you, you know, criticizing us is your way of supporting that we don't want your support. You can shut up. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can talk about people that are out there protesting that are, you know, risking their lives during a pandemic to say, hey, stop killing us. Yeah. Shut up. You yeah. know, if you have nothing to contribute to the conversation or the solution, we don't care how it makes you feel. We are not going to sugarcoat it or hold your hand. People are going to react how they're going to react when they're at the end of their wits. To most people, we're at the end of the world. So if yeah. people are not acting as you know civilly as you want them to act while while they're dying one way or another, they're dying from a disease or dying from being killed by the police. If, if that bothers you, good. It should. Yeah. It should. As a decent human being, those travesties should bother you. And if it if people reacting to it is 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 you know send the wind up your skirt then maybe you should check yourself yeah. maybe you're not as decent as as you think you are maybe you're not as conservative as you think you are because we're all fighting just to be equal just to be seen just to live yeah so like i just i, I took that anger like and i i wrote it performed it had the homies sing on it a couple of years later and i thought like you know it's nate's today's climate this is a, a good time to, to to put this out because we're we're just tired of arguing with people like it's not gonna do anything you can say that oh these protests are invalid because you know that some riots have stopped off i'm like well those things can be replaced right 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 know? and they're all insured by the yeah. way yeah yeah so, they're all, they're all insured, i love to point that part out <laughs> yeah all insured and yeah. but you can't bring george floyd back nope you know you can't yeah. bring him on army back you can't bring Brianna Taylor back. No, we lost yeah. we lost them forever. And you think that's okay. Yeah. And us being mad about it is the problem. Yeah, that's check yourself. Super check yourself. super important song, dude. Super relevant. In fact, um, if you guys are listening to this on Spotify or iTunes, um, again, when this comes out, we're gonna well, I'll post that video right under um the video at platformcollection.com. Go there, you can watch this video as well as that video that he just spoke about right there um, under there. So please do that. Support that. Run those views up. We need important messages to be spread. The best thing you can do, like I said, you want to support us, share that video, um, and you're supporting us. You're supporting the artists that we support. This is one big community. Because they exist, we exist. You see how that all works? It's all one thing. So help yeah. any of these people. You helping us. That's a great thing. Dude, thank you so much for doing this. Again, you got an open door Thanks. policy. Let me know next time you want to come through. Um, yeah, man, and hopefully it's in better times. You know what I mean? Um, and if not, fuck it, man. Let's fucking kill it anyways. We're still here. We're still navigating through, you know? Either way. Yes, sir, G. Uh, dude, thank you. Um, guys, follow follow uh, Diesel. Um, hey, tell him your, your Instagram for people who are listening and not watching. My Instagram is DZYL5K1. And that's on everything. Snapchat, on Xbox, everything. we can squad up, all that. So oh, shoot. YGL 5K1. Oh, shoot. Putting the yeah. challenge out there. All right, man. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored and blessed. Thank yep. you. Yep. That's the homie Diesel, man. Um, dude, I can't say much about my dude. Uh, he's a, one of the good ones, right? He's one of the good ones. That's why we had him on the show. Um, it's an honor to have him, dude. Guys, make sure you check everything out, platformcollection.com. Um, go there, uh, support Diesel's music, support all the artists that we 